Hello everyone, good evening. Hello, hope you can hear me everyone. Uh, we are going to have our session again tonight and uh, I was uh, uh, communicating to the people in the chat box. But anyway, uh, good evening uh, everyone. Uh, we're going to have our Facebook Live on prioritization and delegation tonight. Okay, so um, again, uh, before anything else, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Alan Matus and I am the uh, nurse educator and uh, also I've been teaching students for more than uh, I think 25 years teaching NCLEX uh, and also I'm a nursing faculty I've been teaching students as well um, in the nursing program okay and I'm the uh, founder of Matus Nursing Review and also I'm an author I have a book in Amazon that you can buy it's the simple fast and easy NCLEX review everyone okay um, for tonight, again, we're going to be discussing uh, practice questions on delegation, prioritization, and also, of course, um, uh, we'll be uh, announcing some upcoming uh, programs and promo for the uh, Matus Nursing Review. But uh, before anything else, also, I would like to give a shout out to the um, earliest people who signed in for tonight. So let's see who's the very first person who came over tonight. Okay, so we have Kadiatu. So Kadiatu Trawali is the very first person to sign in for tonight. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Okay, uh, early bird. We also have uh, Timitopi Alaba. So thank you for being here as well. And then also Alan Hill Torres. I would like to welcome some new people in the group that I may not have seen before. Okay, who's new to the group? I think Adriana Sparkles. I think it is your first time for tonight. Okay. We also have um, Justin and who else? I think this is a very good friend of mine, <laughs> um, Adele. Okay, so nice to see you here tonight. It's been a long time, so I miss you. And then also we have uh, Claire, uh, Claire Kikil Abad. Okay, so we're just calling all the people here tonight and just welcoming all of you guys. And lastly, we have Anusilia Ninita. So thank you very much for being here tonight as well. Okay, we still have a lot of people and then uh, I'm going to shout out you guys uh, later on during the program. Okay, so before anything else, uh, again, last week, just a recap. Last week, we announced that uh, starting October 1, 2020, there will be uh, some changes in the uh, current modified NCLEX exam. So October 1, 2020, always remember everyone or be reminded that you will have a minimum of 75 questions and a maximum of 145 questions in your NCLEX PN and NCLEX RN examination, okay? And also you will have 15, uh, 15 uh, pre-test non-scored items as well with a total maximum hours of examination, which is five hours, okay? So don't forget that everybody. All right, so the first uh, part of our program for tonight is going to be our motivational photo of the week. So we always have these photos nowadays. Um, uh, whenever we have our session, we always have the photos sent to us by our students. So we have our student, Jo, she sent me this photo and uh, she's using the workbook while studying and watching in the online NCLEX Academy. So thank you very much, Jo. Um, and it's a very nice photo and hopefully that you're studying very well. And then finally we'll pass the NCLEX and will announce you here if you find your past the NCLEX examination. Thank you. All right, so another one again for tonight, everybody, for sure. We're gonna have your 90-day online access NCLEX review, which will be announced uh, next week, okay? So we have been doing this uh, every week, but um, just to give you all a heads up, uh, maybe we'll uh, change the frequency of this awarding. Maybe we'll do this uh, once a month uh, promo. So we'll see how it goes. But for now, or for uh, for this uh, for this week, we have the free 90-day online access and class review. So whoever is attending the program tonight is going to get uh, the slot, okay, to uh, probably uh, probably win tonight. And again, what's going to happen as well is that uh, we will announce the winner, okay? We will announce the winner of our last week's. Uh, promo okay we'll announce that at the end of the program tonight so everyone who do you think uh do you feel is going to win tonight everybody okay so last week it was uh um um i think i forgot the name actually but then uh last week we have a winner so for this week okay and then also what's gonna happen as well is that um 
some people are asking how do we choose a winner so we put all your names in the website and then we can actually show that in the comment section you know how we choose the winners okay and especially for our winner tonight all right okay so um, before anything else also can you please uh, uh, put in the comment section you know from what country are you coming from everyone so I would like to see uh, especially international you know I want to see uh, people coming from different parts of the world because our NCLEX Online Academy or Online NCLEX Academy is international or this Facebook Live is also international guys so can you put that in you in the comment section everyone and then I'll give a shout out you know so and also, I would like to ask everybody, what are the things that you're learning in this program? And what are your suggestions in future uh, sessions of this program? Because uh, it's been highly, uh, highly successful. And I would like to hear your thoughts. What else do you want me to include in the program, everybody? Okay, so we have from Saipan, we have SGP Renzi. So thank you, Renzi. So Saipan, that's really uh, uh, far a little bit and then we also have from Singapore okay um, Rowana Rodavia okay so the comment section is really very fast it's hard for me to click but then you know so uh, there's a lot of people writing so Rowana Rodavia thank you for being here tonight okay then we also have from Brooklyn New York we have Adriana Sparkles thank you okay and then if you know anyone who passed the NCLEX exam uh, by attending this session let, let us know as well okay or you can email me or you can contact us so that at least we will find out if you are passing the examination because of our program for tonight okay all right but anyway everyone you have to uh, put a big yes in the comment section because we are about to start our first question for tonight so we have two prioritization questions and then we have two delegation questions for tonight everybody okay so are you ready everybody okay so we have a lot of new people okay so from different places so we have one from arizona okay arizona okay so let's proceed everybody our first question for tonight okay and i promise there will be no more glitches last week what happened was uh, uh we had a question wherein we show the answer but for tonight everybody um we want to make sure that i'm not going to show the answers okay so let's have the first question everyone for your prioritization question okay all right so this is a pharmacology question everyone pharmacology question the nurse is administering the morning medication of clients in the medical surgical nursing unit which of the following clients requires the most immediate attention a the 25 year old client who is complaining of soreness at the insulin injection site b the 45-year-old client reports oral thrush due to prolonged steroid inhaler use. C, the 38-year-old client on the Jobson therapy who is complaining of anorexia, nausea, and fatigue. Or letter D, the 28-year-old client who reports dizziness and drowsiness after taking cyclobenzaprine. Okay. So this is pharmacology, everybody. And then I would like also to find out if you can, uh, or I would like also to request everyone to put the rationale. Why is it that you answered a certain uh, item? Okay, and why not letter A, B, C, or D? So again, this is a pharmacology question, which client requires the most immediate attention? Okay, is it A, the 25 year old client who is complaining of soreness at the insulin injection site? B, the 45-year-old client who reports oral thrush due to prolonged steroid inhaler use. C, the 38-year-old client on the Jobson therapy who is complaining of anorexia, nausea, and fatigue. And letter D, the 28-year-old client who reports dizziness and drowsiness after taken, taking cyclobenzaprine. Okay, so, all right. So in answering this question, everybody, it's very important that you have a good core content knowledge on pharmacology, especially the action of medications and the side effects. Some side effects of medications may be reported if they are persistent, okay? So be aware which among all of these choices, A, B, C, and D, represent a dangerous situation, okay? Which one is a safety issue? which one is a reaction to the medication that may need to be reported because it can lead to uh, um, 
a fatal outcomes okay so which one do you think is that everyone okay so let's have the answer to this question everybody i think most of you are answering some of you are answering letter c let's see uh c according to charlie's because gi problems is a sign of the toxin toxicity okay all right so let's see if that's the answer okay uh, another person any other explanation everyone that you want me to show okay so charlie said it's the jobs and toxicity but um what about the other options you know is a not a priority is b not serious is d not serious also what about drowsiness and dizziness when you're taking cyclobenzaprine but i have a question everybody what is cyclo cyclobenzaprine anyway always remember that in the nclex they're not going to uh, give you all the time the brand names in the nclex they will give you the generic name okay generic name so what is cyclobenzaprine okay all right so all right so the answer to this question everyone is going to be of course that would be letter c very good everybody letter c is the answer to this question okay very good okay so the answer is going to be letter c because these are signs of the joxin toxicity i know that most of you know that the joxin toxicity is characterized by bradycardia or tachycardia or arrhythmias or yellow visions or halo visions or blurring of vision right however one of the earliest signs of the joxin toxicity will be gastrointestinal symptoms and one of them is going to be anorexia Usually in the NCLEX, they love anorexia as the uh, sign or symptom of the toxin toxicity. You also have nausea and vomiting. You also have abdominal cramps and also fatigue. So let us see our early signs of the toxin toxicity, especially that you have a combination of symptoms, anorexia, nausea, and fatigue. So the best action there is to find out what's going on with your patient, all right? So that we can give your antidote if in case there is the joxin toxicity i have a question to everybody everybody okay all right everyone what is the normal level of the joxin okay what is the normal level of the joxin everybody okay what's the normal level of the joxin can some someone put that in the comment section everybody what is the normal level of the joxin and also remember that the action of the joxin is to increase the strength of contraction of the heart that is what you call your positive inotropic effect and it also slows down the heart rate okay however um uh, the normal uh level of your digoxin is going to be 0.5 to 2 ng per ml 0.5 to 2 all right and what is the antidote for digoxin toxicity everybody what's the antidote okay the antidote for your digoxin toxicity everyone is going to be your digibind or your digoxin immune fab all right so that's all about your digoxin toxicity everybody and also remember that one of the most common causes of digoxin toxicity is also a low level of potassium okay low level of potassium and also remember that digoxin is being given to patients with heart failure okay and usually if you combine digoxin with furosemide or lasix that increases the urine output and that leads to more hypokalemia and hypokalemia triggers the joxin toxicity okay so remember that so that's why potassium re replacement or monitoring the potassium level is very important now letter a is not the answer in this question because soreness at the injection site may be a problem but not the priority letter b you have oral thrush of course that is uh, a fungal infection we need to address that but letter c is more dangerous okay and letter d dizziness and drowsiness that is an expected side effect of cyclo cyclobenzaprine cyclobenzaprine is a muscle relaxant and usually they cause um sleepiness or drowsiness or dizziness and at the same time um, that's the side effect of the medication an example of a brand name your cyclo cyclobenzaprine is your flex cereal everyone Okay, so letter D may be a concern, especially dizziness and drowsiness that can lead to fall. So ever letter D doesn't indicate, doesn't indicate uh, imminent danger on your patient. So letter C is an, the, the best answer over here, everybody. Okay, the toxicity. Very good, guys. 
All right, so let's have the next question. The next question is going to be very challenging, everyone, and I really want you to analyze the question very well. In the end class, I told you in the past that you will be given four patients, and then you have to choose which patient is the priority. Am I right? So in this question, uh, you pick the right answer. Okay, so we have another priority question, everybody. Four clients arrived together at the emergency room with injuries sustained due to a house fire. Which of the following clients should receive priority intervention? A, the 65-year-old client with oozing bloody lacerations on the head. B, the 18-year-old client who complains of a headache and suit in the sputum. C, the 58-year-old client with third-degree burns on the entire chest or D, the 25-year-old client who is restless and screaming due to intense pain. Okay, so we have a very challenging question, everyone. Okay, four clients arrived together at the emergency room with injuries sustained due to a house fire. Which of the following clients should receive priority intervention? A, the 65-year-old client with oozing bloody lacerations in the head. B, the 18-year-old client who complains of a headache and suit in sputum. C, the 58-year-old client with third-degree burns on the entire chest. Or D, the 25-year-old client who is restless and screaming due to intense pain. All right. So what do you think is the answer to this question, everyone? This is prioritization question. Always remember, guys, that, okay, Again, when it comes to priority, what is the golden rule? Okay, what is the golden rule in prioritization? Before you answer the options, always everyone, before you eliminate, always use the golden rule. What is our mnemonic for prioritization? What is our mnemonic? Number one thing for priorities, prioritizing if you have four patients is this. Always identify unstable patients and who is the most unstable, right? And when you prioritize, you always have to use your what? Airway, breathing, circulation, ABC, safety, neuro or neurological status of your patient, risk for infection, comfort or pain of your patient. Okay. And lastly will be your education of your patient. So airway, breathing, circulation, neuro. So let's see the answer to this question, everyone, is I think some of you have an idea. Some of you can still change your answer, everyone, if you want to. All right. Okay, so uh, Sharon said that letter B is the answer because she said it's an airway problem. Let's see why. What is an airway suit? So Paul says letter B also. Okay, so we have Mike. Mike Serafico said our winner last week for the 90-day online NCLEX Academy raffle. He said it's due to carbon dioxide inhalation or maybe smoke inhalation probably, right? So are you... Ready for the answer, okay? The answer to this question is going to be letter, okay. The answer is going to be letter B, everyone, okay? Letter B, so these are situations of uh, injuries, you have burns, okay? Uh, the answer here is going to be the 68, is going to be the 18 year old client with complaints of headache and suit in the sputum, why? Because soot in the sputum is one of the signs of a burned airway. And if the airway is burned because of smoke inhalation, that's going to cause swelling or edema, and that's going to block the airway. So soot in the sputum or carbonaceous sputum, you have seen nasal hair, okay? A hoarse voice is a sign also of a burned airway. So remember, letter B is the answer because B, you have suit in the sputum. Is letter A a priority? Yes, but letter A is ABC. That is a circulation problem or oxygenation problem, your letter A. So that's more of circulation. Letter C, third degree burns on the entire chest or even the head. That is also serious. However, in this situation, airway comes first. Am I right? And you should always remember that pain may not always be the first in the situation, okay? Physiologic first, so you have your uh, airway, which is letter B. And if I am to rank the priorities in this uh, 
in this question. I would say letter B comes first, and then you may have letter A or C together, and then the last one will be your D, okay? All right? Okay, so who got the question right, everybody? Very good. So most of you are answering carbon monoxide inhalation, or let's say smoke inhalation. So Debbie said smoke inhalation. So very good, okay? So good. So you just pass your NCLEX, everyone, with that prioritization question, right? Okay, so are you all ready for our next question, everyone? So uh, this next question that we have, a lot of you have been doing very well in the uh, delegation part. So again, let's have your delegation question for tonight, everyone, and hopefully in your NCLEX, this helps you a lot, okay? So let's have your delegation question again can you put in the comment section everybody what is the meaning of three s's when delegating again okay so we have mentioned that in the class over here and the question is can the lpn delegate to the uap yes okay in some in some states maybe no but uh, in some states lpn can delegate to uaps rns can delegate to uap and the lpn Okay, so let's proceed now to our next question, everyone. So we are going to have your delegation question. Okay, so this is your question for tonight, everyone, for delegation. The registered nurse assigns task. Okay, assigns task to the licensed practical nurse. Okay, during admission of a client who is receiving chemotherapy due to colon cancer. Which of the following tasks may be delegated to the LPN? Select all that apply. A, administering morphine oral solution. B, completing the admission assessment. C, teaching the client about the side effects of chemotherapy. D, assessing bowel sounds. E, formulating the care plan. F, performing colostomy care. Or G, you also have letter G, collecting a stool sample, okay? So the registered nurse or RN assigns tasks to the licensed practical nurse or LPN during admission of a client who is receiving chemotherapy due to colon cancer. Which of the following tasks may be delegated to the LPN? Okay, A, administering morphine oral solution, B, completing the admission assessment, C, teaching the client about side effects of chemotherapy. D, assessing bowel sounds. E, formulating the care plan. F, performing colostomy care. And G, collecting the stool sample. Okay, what is the answer to this question, everybody? Okay, all right. What task can be delegated to the LP? N to the LPN everyone. Okay, which task can be delegated to the LPN? All right, so some of you are putting your answers now, everybody. Okay, you have to analyze the question very well, everyone, making sure your answers are complete. This is select all that applies, so be very careful. You can put your answers again if you want, if you want to change your answer. Okay, I want to make sure that you're getting the right answer so you can put again your answers, everybody. Okay, so what do you think? You have to use the process of elimination in this question, everyone. All right, you need to make sure you don't eliminate an item that may be included. Okay, that may be included. All right. So we have different answers among everyone here in the group. I want you all to look at the answers and really analyze what do you think is the answer. I'm giving you actually more time, all right? I'm giving you more time because I know that you have seven choices, I guess, or eight choices in this question, okay? All right? So hopefully all of you are analyzing very well, everyone. Okay, you can still change your answer if you want. Okay, all right, so let's now have the answer to this question, everyone, and I will explain. 
I will try my very best to really explain very well, okay? Because I know that it's a little bit complicated, but we're gonna learn a lot of things tonight in delegation, everyone. The only problem with this question is that you have a lot of choices. You don't only have one answer, okay? So that makes it a little bit difficult for you, okay? So the answer to this question is going to be, all right, so we have one person here who answered, Rashmi said ADFG. So we'll find out if that is going to be correct, okay? Uh, someone answered, okay? So you make sure that you know the, uh, okay? So another one, we have Renly, also letter A and F, okay? Okay. So the answer to this question, everyone, is going to be A, D, F, and G. Okay, so some of you got the correct answer, everyone. A, D, F, and G. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to explain all the correct answers first. Are you listening, everyone? I really want you to listen because I'm going to explain all the correct answers. Letter A is included because that is within the scope of practice of an LPN. LPNs can give oral medications. Remember that. LPNs cannot give IV medications. They cannot give IV medications. Oral medications, okay. Even if it's morphine, a narcotic, or opioid, that is going to be okay. A is included, okay? Letter D, assessing bowel sounds. Yes, LPNs can do specific or focus assessment. They can do that. LBNs or LPNs can assess bowel sounds. They can listen to breath sounds also. However, complete, comprehensive, and initial assessment should be for the registered nurse. For example, if the patient is a one that is new, and it requires total assessment or full assessment, that would be the RN, okay? So the LPN can just gather the information, the uh, bowel sound, for example, but the LPN will not be responsible for describing the overall, the overall health status of your patient. The person or the RN is the one responsible for, for analyzing and interpreting and uh, and of course, uh, assessing the health, health status of your patient. But definitely the LPN can do an assessment and give the, give the uh, result of the assessment to the registered nurse for analysis. So in short, the LPN contributes to the assessment process, okay? But in terms of complete assessment and at the same time, um, uh, evaluating the overall overall health status of your patient that will be the registered nurse. Uh, letter F, performing colostomy care, of course, that is within the scope of practice of the LPNs. And letter G, collecting a stool specimen that is within the scope of practice of the LPN, of course. Now, letter B, completing the admission assessment, that is the responsibility, okay? Completing the admission assessment, of course, is the responsibility of the registered nurse comprehensive initial admission assessment, okay? The LPN can contribute to that assessment. However, the RN is the one responsible for completing the whole assessment. Now, letter C, teaching, definitely that's the responsibility of the, of the RN, teaching the client about side effects of chemo. Uh, can the LPN not teach? Well, uh, it depends on the state also. However, LPNs can teach, uh, especially if it's more of reinforcement reinforcement or LPNs can also teach probably uh, using or if these are if this is education with established materials um, a very good example of uh, LPN um, education could be that uh, when the LPN is giving flu vaccine for example and the LPN explains the reason for the flu vaccine then that would be uh, uh, teaching on the part of the LPN okay now Another one you have, letter E, perf uh, formulating the care plan. Formulating the care plan is going to be the registered nurse, everyone, okay? The LPN can make suggestions. However, formulation of the care plan or planning totally, that would be your registered nurse, okay? So I hope you learned something out of this delegation again. Uh, just always remember that, all right? Okay, so 
Congratulations for those who got the right answer for this session. Okay, again, LPNs can do specific or focused assessment. Okay, they can check the heart rate before they give the joxin, and then if it's abnormal, report that to the RN. Okay, they can do specific or focused assessment. Okay, everyone, I hope you learned something with that one. Okay, uh, collecting the stool specimen can also be within the scope of practice of the UAP, definitely. Okay, but if you have a UAP and you have the LPN, you might want to give the collecting the stool specimen to the UAP if you want to make sure that you're dividing the task properly. Okay, all right. Always remember the LPN can do things that the UAP can do. However, make sure that uh, uh, if you have a UAP and LPN in front of you, you don't want the LPN to be the one ambulating your patient. Ambulation is usually for the UAP. Okay, all right. So let's have the next question, everyone. All right. So next question, everybody. Okay. So let's have the next question. This is another delegation question, everyone. And this question, everybody, the registered nurse works with a licensed assisted personnel in caring for a client who sustained a major burn injury a few weeks ago. Which of the following tasks may be delegated to the UAP? Select all that apply. Okay. All right. All right. So A, changing wound dressings. B, placing the client on semi fowler's position. C, monitoring the color of wound drainage. D, measuring weight and height upon admission. E, providing oral care. F, performing tracheostomy suctioning, G, obtaining vital signs, or H, placing a bedpan for elimination. Again, the registered nurse works with unlicensed assisted personnel, or UAP, in caring for a client who sustained a major burn injury a few weeks ago. Which of the following tasks may be delegated to the UAP? Select all that apply. A, changing wound dressings. B, placing the client a semi fowler's position. C, monitoring the color of wound drainage. D, measuring the height and weight of an admission. Okay. E, providing oral care. F, performing tracheostomy suctioning. G, obtaining vital signs. And H, placing a bedpan for elimination. Okay. And I would like also to remind everyone that um, at the end of the day, we are we are having all the discussions over here. But remember, you have to always follow the policy and procedure of the facility where you work. That's the most important thing, everyone. Okay? So always follow the policy and procedure of your facility because sometimes your policy and procedure may limit your scope of practice in the facility. So it doesn't mean that you can always administer oral morphine. You know, for example, if the facility says that only RNs can give oral morphine, then you have to follow your policy, everyone, okay? So we're just discussing general nursing ideas over here, okay, or concepts. So let's see, okay, I'll give you a little bit more time because you have, I think, eight uh, choices in this question, I guess, I guess, okay, eight choices. So let's see, always remember the three S's of delegating to the UAP. It must be within the scope of practice. It has to be a stable patient. And the last one is it has to be a simple routine only everyone. Okay. So let's have the answer everybody. Okay. So in this question, the strategy that you will have in the NCLEX is make sure you slow down a little bit and then use the process of elimination and treat each option like a true or false question. Okay. All right. So let's proceed, everyone. The answer to this question is going to be... All right, everybody. So this is the answer to the question. You have your B, your D, your E, G, and H. Even me, I'm having a hard time trying to, uh, to uh, put the answers together, okay? But the UAP definitely can place the client on the semi fowler's position. Positioning is part of the responsibility. Then measuring weight and height, okay, weight and height upon admission. 
So we have Charlie saying that UAP oral suction is okay, not tracheostomy suctioning, okay? In other states, probably they allowed to do that, but definitely not tracheal suctioning or tracheostomy because uh, there is a sterile principle that we need to observe there. Providing oral care, definitely uh, obtaining vital signs and placing a bedpan for elimination. Changing wound dressings for our burn patients, no, especially that we have to observe sterile technique, okay? Monitoring the color of wound drainage. Always remember, RNs are not supposed to delegate EAT. What is EAT? Evaluation, assessment, and teaching. When you talk about assessment, it has to be comprehensive assessment. And teaching means complex teaching, okay? So example of complex teaching will be discharge teaching, or if it's a new procedure or anything new, the RN should be the one teaching your patient, okay? Monitoring the color of wound drainage is the RN or licensed nurse and performing tracheostomy suctioning, that would be a licensed nurse also, okay? So thank you very much, everybody. You got the right answer to this question. I'm really very happy, okay? So hope you learned something tonight, everyone. We will be announcing the winner of our 90-day online NCLEX act, uh, access everyone, okay? But before anything else, again, everybody, I would just like to show to you our online program. So we have the self-study programs and uh, self-study online programs that comes with a workbook. And then we also have our 10-day live webinar every Saturday starting in October 10 to December 19, okay? October 10 to December, that will be our 10-day live webinar every Saturday. And then we also have, uh, we also have every Tuesday, the uh, fast track review every Tuesday. We do that from 6 to 9.30 p.m. Pacific time, everyone. So we have Tuesday schedules for a live webinar, and then we also have the Saturday schedule, okay? And then, of course, another one, everyone, okay? We also have the uh, this one. So if you on enroll online, uh, your enrollment in the online academy, um, comes with also with all the recordings of this session. So you'll be able to watch all of the sessions that we have since April this year, um, the nursing prioritization and delegation Q drills. And all of our students uh, are enjoying watching these videos, the nursing prioritization delegation Q drills, okay? All right. And then I have a special announcement, everyone. Okay, special announcement, everybody. As I told you the last time, our NCLEX Access Workbook, which a lot of students really like, it's on sale for $94.50. You can buy that and then you can use the workbook. You have to enroll online and we have a plan which is $49 per month and your total NCLEX review is $143.50. So this is one of the most affordable NCLEX review programs out there because I just really want to help the students, okay? So you buy the workbook, $94.50, and it comes with my, with my signed bookmark, and then also $49 per month subscription, and that's going to be $143.50, okay? That's going to be your, um, yes, affordable NCLEX review, everybody. And of course, um, students have been uh, very happy about the workbook, everyone. And then last announcement before we announce our winner, uh, winner everybody, is that we have our Labor Day sale for next week, everybody. We have 50% off of our one-year unlimited online access and Clex PN review. So from uh, 449, it's going to be 224.50 only, okay? 224.50, and it ends September 7, 2020, 12 midnight. So you just have to enter the Q coupon code, which is 50 half of every one. So this ends September 7, 2000, 2020 at 12 midnight Pacific time. Okay. All right. So now everyone, are you ready to know who's going to win tonight? Okay. Renly said she's learning a lot tonight. Thank you very much. Although we are, we are only here for, uh, for a short uh, time, uh, uh, you learn something. And Annie also, remember Annie passed her NCLEX last week, so she passed her NCLEX examination. So she enrolled in our program and she passed the NCLEX, okay? And then we also have Menchi, she's one of our students right now in the NCLEX review every Saturday. And Charlize again also, I think, is taking her board exam as well, okay? So anyway, everybody, our winner for tonight was excited. 
Mm. Our winner for tonight, everybody, is going to be congratulations to Kikil Barker. Okay, so Kikil Barker, you're our winner for the free 90-day online access and course review. So congratulations. What I would like you to do is to uh, send us an email to uh, claim your prize. It's going to be 90 days online so we can enroll you. Congratulations. Okay, so everyone, congratulate Kikil uh, Barker okay um for winning tonight's uh um uh, tonight's uh um uh, uh what is this tonight's uh tonight's uh, uh raffle everyone okay but anyway everybody thank you very much again and also for your support for those also who uh, bought the mask online thank you very much i'll give you a shout out next week um, every dollar that you spend for the mask that you bought in our website, one dollar goes actually to a uh, to a uh, to a um, uh, program that feeds uh, children. Okay, so thank you very much. So thank you very much, everybody, and thank you very much for your support. And I'm here again to make your NCLEX review simple, fast, and easy, everybody. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, and have a good night. I'll see you again next week.